icon on my PC app that shows pre-moderation. Um, and I just X'd it. So that's cool. All right, that helps. Um, all right, guys, I think we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, uh, first of all, welcome uh, to our Healing Choices. Um, for those of you guys who don't know, uh, we have this program every uh, Tuesday night at 6 Pacific. Um, we talk about a different uh, wellness topic each week. We discuss it. Uh, people who have something to contribute, uh, they feel compelled to share, share, and anyone else who just wants to learn something new about a topic they're not so familiar with, uh, you can just relax and, and enjoy the program, just listen in. So uh, without further ado, uh, the topic of the week is uh, traditional versus modern tools of communication. Um, basically, is it is this getting back to the, are we getting, trying to get back to the basics here or what? You know, um, this may go all different ways. Uh, I'm, I'm just going to list the points for, uh, for discussion so you guys can just ha kind of have some tools to work with here. Um, and these are all questions. First off, what are some traditional tools of communication? Uh, what are some modern tools of communication? What are our observations on what is used in our life and in our world and our thoughts about that? And then um, what are the pros and cons of traditional versus modern tools? And uh, how does the future of communication look like? And what are the implications from our personal perspectives? Um, and hopefully we'll get to some solutions on and what's, what's a good way to go about this, you know? maybe strike a balance here. I don't know what's going to go down, but um, that's, that's a topic, traditional versus modern tools of communication. So maybe we can start um, any general thoughts and, uh, and or what are some traditional tools of communication? What are, uh, what are the basics? All right, well, I guess I'll start. Um, I think postal services are, you know, a modern form of communication. People had to send postcards in order to communicate with people, and they had to wait to receive something back to know the person got it. And um, as for, you know, today's technology, we can communicate so much better, cell phones, texting, uh, you know, Facebook, just different things like that. It's definitely advanced incredibly. Actually, the post office is a is a traditional form. I mean, it's been around for over 150 years. Um, you know, starting off with the Pony Express, which was rather dangerous. The prices have gotten, you know, rather steep. So, you know, sending a traditional letter, is, uh, you know, a lot of people opt not to do that because you do have to wait a while and there is a cost. Um, but, you know, like receiving a greeting card is so much better than sending you know, e-greeting from mountaingreetings.com. <laughs> um, you know, newer isn't always better. You know, it really depends on what message you want to convey. Um, you know, I notice a lot of people text when it's, it's so much better to talk on the phone. Texting is great if you have a short message, but if you have much to say, I think it's ridiculous to be texting back and forth in a ridiculous amount of time. I mean, many, many times back and forth. And things can definitely get lost in the translation. There can be misunderstanding. Um, so I think really people should definitely get back to phone calls more. Um, now there's video chatting, which is which is awesome. You can hear the person's voice, but you can also see them, which is to me better than a phone call. Um, unlike on here, everybody can talk at the same time. Uh, you can even get groups of people in. So it, it works great when you can't actually be in person with someone. And there's nothing lost in the message since you can see their expressions and you can hear what they're saying as well. Um, Zello is a great thing for, you know, modern times. Uh, you can hear everyone's voices and it's crystal clear. And you can meet so many people that you definitely would not have met otherwise. Uh, even close by, that you could actually meet up in person. So, you know, there's there's pluses and minuses to both. 
for sure, and I think I just outlined some of them. So we're going to call a phone call basically a traditional form of community or tool of communication. Is that is it's both old school and modern kind of you know? So maybe we should do, do we call on the landline or do we call on our cell phone? And there's a factor there too because cell phone calls they're not perfectly reliable. And, you know sometimes people's voice cuts out and you have trouble um, you miss some communication there. So, you know, do we still need a landline even, you know? So, yeah. Yeah, I don't know if really that if we need a landline. Um, if you're into doing faxing, yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, I really, I don't see the point, <laughs> honestly. Um, but yeah, I would call phones. I mean, yes, it's it's modern to a degree, especially cell phones. But again, being able to make phone calls has been around for well over 100 years um, or a little over, whatever. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a good form of communication. But yeah, it's been around for a long time. And it's definitely improved. And we used to have sometimes we'd, we'd, hear, uh, we'd hear other people come on the line by accident and wires getting crossed and all kinds of weird stuff. I don't know, some of you probably don't remember that. I remember my mom even had this... Uh, there was one wall, there was a, a phone jack on either side of that wall, the only place in the house. Um, but like when you plugged in your phone, you could faintly hear an AM radio station coming in on it. Um, I don't know if that ever corrected itself or not, but uh, maybe a grounding issue caused that. But um, yeah, and then we've had cordless phones around for a long time. Anyway, I think I'm just rambling at this point. Uh, you make a decent point of like today we're using Zillow to communicate and back in the day with landline phones, uh, definitely way back then, lines crossing up and stuff like that, doing party lines, you know, you call your one friend and they call somebody, la, 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 you end up with a whole bunch of people on the line and now it's done modernized into technology and whatnot and into a application where you can communicate with people around the world instead of just in your neighborhood. Oh, they still have some kind of form of party lines, but not where you can talk to. Kurt, across the road, but I think uh, a modern thing is like writing letters on a paper, you know, or, you know paper, and then probably a computer and phone, you know, and then you could copy it onto your printer, but the modern way is pencil and paper, but the I mean, bad part about it is, you know, you don't have spell check or something like that. I was thinking also, um, um, we, just even for, for Zello purposes, there's people that, that cut out based on the cell phone signal. You don't always hear all of what they just said. Like, even get her done. I didn't hear everything that he just said. So, I mean, you would need a landline to make sure that you that your voice comes through clearly on both ends. And in fact, there are some people that live so far into the mountains or whatever that they would either need a landline or they need some kind of a satellite um, a phone or something like this, you know. So, um, yeah, there's cases where landlines are still needed, you know, and it's where it's better to talk on a landline. If you have both, in front of you, you you ought to be using the landline just to make sure that you know you're not going to get cut off in any way. Um, it would be the other person you know going through a, a mountain pass or something that would really do it if, if that was going to happen. But at least you know you're not the cause of a cutout. And going forward, I, you know, you already have the, uh, you know, virtual reality, you know, of just gaming or whatever. But that's, I can see that soon being 
you know, like you're talking to somebody right in front of you and they're 5,000 miles across the way. And then even like, you know, you see the holograms like in Star Wars, you know, people hold something in their hand. It's a little holographic thing. I see that coming in, you know, the near future too, probably within the next 20 years, maybe. You know, there's just so many different ways that you're going to be able to communicate with people across the globe and just get work done, stay in touch with family better, and just overall in general, just have a better time communicating with people. But, yeah, I agree with the landline as well. You can't really uh, beat a landline if you got one. And even through uh, faxes, they're not even using landlines anymore because cop cars have faxes in their squad cars and everything because um, that's how they receive these bulletins about, uh, you know, guys, you know, they've committed crimes and such. Yeah, yeah, you definitely don't even have to have a, a landline to do a fax. It can be done electronically, you know, through email and stuff now. Um, or you can send one through an email and they can receive it on their, their fax machine. But yeah, I can definitely see communication um, advancing more and more. Yeah, even the three uh, might be where we don't even need a screen eventually. But like get her done was talking about, you know, people rely on the technology these days, you know, with these smartphones, they got where if you uh, it kind of making the it just depends on the people, of course, but kind of make them a little dumb, maybe because you don't know how to actually read or write anymore because you can just talk to your phone and it correct spells every damn thing for you instead of writing a letter to a person, you know, and everybody depends on if they have good service area, that's all they depend on is a smart device. And the uh, hologram thing, it's already, it ain't an actual hologram, but it's kind of in existence. You taking uh, Amazon ask little thingy that you buy off of Amazon, you ask it a question, it tells you all sorts of stuff, weather, traffic, all that mess, but it's just a little box. It ain't a little thing that pops up, looks like a human or anything. Okay, so um, I've been listening to you guys while I've been um, cooking my dinner, and um, I, I guess this is probably not going to be the most popular opinion, um, although we haven't actually gotten into any opinions. We've just been describing forms of communication, but I think we're missing the point. Um, you know, we're talking about what it is and not how it is or why it is or, you know, that kind of thing. What, what does it mean? And to me, um, I mean, I really think that in some ways, um, all of these great new ways of communicating, texting, um, using Zello, the internet, all of these things, they're all wonderful. Don't get me wrong, it's wonderful. It's, it's great to see other people's points of view and, and talk to people all around the world, that's great. But at the same time, we used to have much more tight-knit you know, social structures. Uh, we used to have uh, civic organizations and clubs, you know, bowling leagues, the Elks Club, you know, all these things like that. Um, you know, we used to go to church. Um, I mean, I'm not a big fan of church, but we used to have strong social um, ties to, to community. And, you know, we used to all know each other and, and we had tight knit intergenerational families. Um, and, uh, you know, we were, we were, if you, if you were growing up in say the 1950s in Providence, Rhode Island, for instance, or the 1960s, you know, you were constantly surrounded by your family members and your friends and your community members and the people in your church and all these people, they were people, they were face to face. They weren't on Facebook. They weren't on social media. They weren't checking your Instagram feed. They were right there. And, and we're social animals. We're social animals and we need that social connection. And I feel like in some ways our disconnection, you know, really contributes to loneliness. It contributes to alienation and, you know, in our modern society because, and we're being alienated by our forms of communication because they're just not as good as just, you know, talking to someone face to face. They're just not as good, you know, and, and we're, we're trying to fill those gaps. I mean, uh, all of us sitting 
you know, here on Zello right now, we're, we're probably alone. We're probably not surrounded by friends and family, but yet we're, we're reaching out, trying to connect because we need that connection. But unfortunately that connection just isn't quite as good as, you know, talking to another person face to face. And that's the sad reality. Uh, sorry. I'm for hugging the mic. A hog whatsoever. That was uh, important words that needed to be said. That was basically the premise of why this topic kind of drifted into um, our uh, field of view <laughs> last week. Someone had to mention how like how how bad it is that we're always gravitating towards texting people versus like calling them. He's like, I didn't need. I, I, uh, I think it was Danny. I forget. Uh, Danny, Ray Ray, uh, I forget who it was, but he's like, look, this is just messed up, you know? He says, I can't even remove text messaging from my phone. They won't even let me do it. <laughs> so yeah, that, that disconnection, I think you're right. We're all grasping for more. And what we really need is to just call and meet up with someone. And I was thinking the other thing that, that prohibits that slightly these days is that back in those days, gas did not cost nearly what it costs today. I mean, you could go long road trips and it wouldn't hit your, you wouldn't think about um, driving uh, being a huge cost in that. Um, but nowadays, like you wanna make a road trip, you wanna see a, a good friend, you know, uh, a couple hours away, it's much more of a thing to consider than it was in, the, in those days. So um, a lot easier, maybe it was meant to be, maybe it was planned that way, I don't know. but. Yeah, we're all gravitating towards, you know, digital, digital, modern forms. And maybe we could list some of those. Um, any, uh, any ones that come up that are primary, like time sucks and, you know, alternatives to real communication out there? Well, that's kind of like um, myself, like Cheryl was saying, and y'all, talking about I am not a one I don't care to text I will text like Lisa in the morning say good morning and all that to her tell her I love her and stuff like that then like around lunchtime and stuff he won't go grab a bite to eat something like that but if I'm one I'd rather talk to you on the phone I can't really stand texting if it's something real short I just will throw it out there but other than that, I call people up. And then old communication, getting up with friends and stuff, still do that on the weekends. Uh, Thursday night, car night, get with the guys, hang out, stuff like that. Uh, people don't do that much anymore, you know. Just communicate through social media. And it's turning into, it's going to be, there was a movie or a show that I watched one time where it then turned into a social network pretty much. And it, the social network went down and everybody started looking around and realized they were human. And, but it, they thought they were like robots pretty much. And that's the only way to communicate. And they started getting up and doing things and interacting with people again after the uh, social service went down. I forget the name of the movie. I think it was a movie, but it was kind of in the future type thing. Pretty cool. As the old bastard in the room, um, what, what I'm afraid of is that people who were born in, in these times will never experience the levels of, uh, the social, uh, they won't have the social experience that Abby was talking about. Old guys like me, I mean, we we have that, and and we can we can still we can still do that, and we can do this too. And we think this is really cool because we're talking to people that we would never talk to if we didn't have this new technology. But what what I'm afraid of is the the, the children who were born in this era will never have those. Uh, social networks uh, that are important. Yeah, and, you know, I, Abby's got some great points there, and we're closer. Um, one of the reasons is there weren't as many people, so 
you know, when you have smaller communities, you can have smaller, a smaller, a better, a greater sense of community. Um, and now there's just, there's so many people. Um, people, they may very well be busier these days than they once were. I could be wrong. So, I mean, that could also factor in. Um, but there's also technology. And technology, the communication should be used as a supplement um, or used like, let's say you don't have time to, to see them in person or talk to them on the phone. So, you know, you just send them a, a little message uh, on whatever you decide to use. But it shouldn't be used as a substitute, um, you know, spending your time on Facebook and texting and all that when you could call them up on the phone, hear their voice, and make some plans to see them in person. You know, uh, yeah, I mean, communities used to be smaller, and there used to be more people that lived in rural communities and not as much urbanization and stuff. But at the same time, I mean, if you were to go, I'm sorry to use Providence, Rhode Island as an example, but I'm guessing that in the 1950s, there were quite a few people that lived there, and it was a very urban environment. You know, at the same time, it was a, a rich and robust community with lots and lots of social ties to, you know, the community and everybody knew everybody and in the little neighborhoods there. Um, and, you know, I really think that the, the change came about when people had people and we used to have to entertain each other. We have, we used to have to visit with each other you know, or tell each other stories or, or play live music and that kind of thing. And, and with the advent of mass communication, with the advent of radio, the advent of TV, you know, those kinds of things, I mean, it started changing our way of, of how we related with each other and, and the kinds of things that we did to entertain ourselves. And that started kind of, you know, um, fraying that social fabric. And of course, you know, the internet just kind of accelerated that. Um, and I mean, and I love music and I love movies and I love TV and, and all of that. And, um, but you know, at the same time, I mean, I just, I just really, really wish I had more people in my life because honestly, I, I don't have enough people in my life. Um, you know, and, and partly that's my choice. I moved to a city, you know, I moved away from my family my family is all in South Georgia and I have a, a very large family. Um, they're in South Georgia, you know, I have 16, 17 first cousins, uh, there in South Georgia. Um, but, um, unfortunately for reasons, um, I really wasn't able to, you know, have the kind of life that I needed to have there. So I, I had to move and I've, I've lived in New York city and I've, I've lived, you know, now I live in Portland, Oregon, but it's, um, it's hard to find community. It's hard to find that, that sense of community. And, um, <clears throat> the things that we use to substitute for it just just um are are you know um a paler shade of white i guess you know just not as good i, I don't know if that's the best metaphor but anyway um yet again sorry for hugging the mic hey no problem good good insight there abby and like david was saying you know people uh 50 uh, like he's an old guy of course but uh i was raised up kind of like he is 50 50 i can do social stuff on here facebook instagram but at the same time still do the old school stuff and like he was saying the next generation they are nothing but a social life kids playing these video games connected to the internet talking to people like going here, you know, across the world type thing, people they've never met, instead of going out and meeting uh, friends in the neighborhood or in the town and all. Um, we're losing that. Family members need to teach their kids how to still go outside and uh, communicate that way before losing it completely and becoming a social world. Thanks, Carl, for better making my point there. And I just want to tell Abby, in the 50s, in Providence, Rhode Island, they drank a lot of wine. <laughs> well, I think the thing is, too, you know, especially with kids, you know, they don't have, they don't go out and play like they used to. Like, you know, when I was a little kid, I mean, we had, we had, uh, 
electronics and stuff, you know, we have maybe a uh, so advanced, you know, you got PlayStation and all these other game consoles, you know. So if they go out and play baseball, they they play it on TV, you know, or play soccer or anything, hopscotch, you know, anything like that, you know. They don't go out and socialize as much, you know. I'll just give a little bit of a, of a reference here. I'm looking at this statistic. Um, I'm just going to compare the lowest age range, um, which is under 18 years old, like in regards to voice, minutes used, and text, text sent and received, right? I'm going to compare the pre-18 to my age range, right? Pre-18, uh, 631 minutes of voice used, my age range, 896. We talk a little bit more than them. If you, but if you compare text messages, my age range is only 441. This is over a year span, right? Average over a year span per person, 441 text messages. Um, this was back in, I guess, 2009, 2010. This was back then. It's probably even crazier now. But um, 441 text messages in my age range and uh, pre-18, almost 8,000, 2,779 average number of text messages sent and received over a year span. I think it's way higher than that right now. But it's just this huge, like pre-18, it's like they're not even communicating anymore. They're just text messages. They're just texting each other. They're doing it on this mass scale. I'm afraid that someday we will evolve to like not have a, a mouth anymore. We won't even need it. We'd have, we'll have to IV food, feed ourselves food, but we won't need a mouth to talk. It would be crazy. I don't know if you were done, but your mic was gone. I'm going to read something that kind of relates to what you guys have been saying for the last five minutes. All right, this is for those who were born before 1970s or 70, whatever. Um, First, we were we survived being born to mothers who smoked and or drank sherry while they carried us and lived in houses made of asbestos. They took aspirin, ate blue cheese, bread and dripping, raw egg products, loads of bacon and processed meat, tuna from a can, and didn't get tested for diabetes or cervical cancer. Then, after that trauma, our baby cots were covered with bright colored lead-based paints. We had no childproof lids on medicine bottles, doors, or cabinets, and we rode our bikes. When we rode our bikes, we had no helmets or shoes, not to mention the risks we took hitchhiking. As children, we would ride in cars with no seat belts or airbags. We drank water from the garden hose and not from a bottle. Takeaway food was limited to fish and chips. No pizza shops, McDonald's, KFC, Subway, or Nando's. Even though all the shops closed at 6 p.m. and didn't open on Sunday, somehow we didn't starve to death. We shared one soft drink with four friends from one bottle, and no one actually died from this. We would collect old drink bottles and cash them in at the corner store and buy toffees, gobstoppers, and bubblegum. We ate cupcakes, white bread and real butter, milk from the cow, and drank soft drinks with real sugar in it. But we weren't overweight because we were always outside playing. We would leave home in the morning and play all day as long as we were back when the street lights came on. Remember that? Remember that? Are you sure you're home by the time the street lights come on? I do remember that. No one was able to reach us all day, and we were okay. We would spend hours building our go-karts out of old prams and then ride down the hill, only to find out we forgot the brakes. We built tree houses and dens and played in riverbeds with matchbox cars. We didn't have Playstations, Nintendo Wii, Xboxes, no video games at all, no 999 channels on Sky, no video, DVD films, or color TV, no mobile phones, no personal computers, no internet or internet chat rooms. We had friends, and we went outside and found them. We fell out of trees, got cut, broke bones and teeth, and there were no lawsuits from these accidents. Only girls had pierced ears. We ate worms and mud pies from dirt, and the worms <laughs> did not live in us forever. We could only buy Easter eggs and hot cross buns at Easter time. We were given air guns and catapults for our 10th birthdays. We rode bikes or walked to a friend's house and knocked on the door or rang the bell or just yelled for them. Mom didn't have to go to work to help Dad make ends meet because we didn't need to help keep up with the Joneses. 
excuse me. Not everyone made the rugby, football, cricket, netball team. Those who didn't had to learn to deal with disappointment. Imagine that. Getting into the team was based on merit. Our teachers used to hit us with canes and gym shoes and throw the blackboard rubber at us if they thought we weren't concentrating. We can string sentences together and spell and have proper conversations because of a good solid three R's education. Our parents would tell us to ask a stranger to help us cross the road. The idea of a parent bailing us out if we broke the law was unheard of. They actually sided with the law. Our parents didn't invent stupid names for their kids like Kiora and Blade and Ridge and Vanilla. We had freedom, failure, success, and responsibility, and we learned how to deal with it all. If you are one of them, congratulations. <laughs> so true. That actually proceeded in on down from families and stuff. Even though I was born in 84, that's how I was pretty much. Rode in the back of a pickup truck, uh, rode bikes, all that mess pretty much. Drank from water hose, lived the country style, and still here, you know. <laughs> Never drink out of a hose. That's interesting. Oh, you drink out of a hose, you'll, you'll get cancer. Don't do that. No, no. Remember, like, rock fights and stuff? Yeah, I remember rock fights. My My friend won't let me forget it. <laughs> Apparently, a friend of mine at that time threw a rock at my current friend and he has a scar right between his eyes from where the rock hit him. Uh, I kind of laughed, but I kind of like, well, wait, why are you going to look at me? I didn't know the rock. He's like, but you were part of it. That was at the time when, when he was like a stranger to our street and we were territorial. <laughs> it was pretty bad. Shoot. Uh, we did worse than, well, that's pretty bad, rock fights, but uh, Little Red Rider, you know, the uh, BB gun and all. We would play cops and robbers, uh, cowboys and Indians, go around shooting one another with damn BB guns. Got caught and got BB guns taken away from us. All that mess. <laughs> it's funny as hell, though. We also had the uh, like plum wars when the plums were all hard and green and stuff. Remember that? The old, the old school paintball. <laughs> Rocks and plums, apparently. Uh, we've we've adapted since to gun to to air uh, paintball guns. Yeah, I have a pellet gun, actually. I've posted it in the channel a couple of times. I'm proud of it. Uh, hi, guys. Um, sorry to, you know, um, anyway, I've got to run. Um, my, you know, it's really, it's kind of funny, um, given the topic, uh, you know, communication, face-to-face -face and all that, because my dad, you know, he's not very good with cell phones. <laughs> Uh, he's 78 and uh, doesn't really use them very well. Uh, he just showed us, knocked on my door. So he's he's here to visit, so I've got to go. But uh, you guys have fun, okay? All right, Abby. Have a great night. Thanks for stopping by. Um, you're awesome. Um, in case anyone hasn't told you that recently, <laughs> take care of yourself. Uh, yeah, come by. Stop in. Uh, we do this every week. So good to have your, your voice here uh, whenever you feel up to it. Yeah, good night. Thanks for uh, joining in the conversation and and, and um, contributing. Later, Ed. Uh, later, dude, I don't know. Hey, everybody. I'm finally back. I'm sorry I missed, like, most of the show. Welcome back. What about um the I know David probably remember this one. Um uh, sticking uh, a stick in a old bicycle tire or old uh used vehicle tire, you know to have fun with. 
yeah, I did that to this kid that was trespassing through the neighborhood, and then he went and got his dad, and I got in trouble. I remember my dad telling my brothers to ride me on the handlebars to take me with them. <laughs> yeah, they were bad if they didn't take me on the handlebars down the road. Down a big hill. <laughs> I remember people saying they used to do it, though, <clears throat> riding big tires, you know, getting those big, like, or something, you know, something that has a big inside. <laughs> Anyone else notice Gitter Dunn's uh, audio cutting out, in and out? Um, wondering if it's just me. Mm, same on this end, but... Yeah, the big old tractor tires and stuff did that, but um, it was an old school way of just having fun. Instead of being bored out of your mind, you take a stick, you know, and mainly what we used was a little tractor, uh, little bike tires and stuff. Take and run alongside of it and keep it rolling with the stick, you know, and all that mess. My grandfather told it to me. He said he did it, and my dad did it, and all that mess. Oh, yeah, I remember that. I also remember we used to take uh, those waxed boxes that appliances used to come in, like refrigerator boxes, and we would ride them down the grass hills like like uh, as if you were on a snowboard uh, on snow, but it was it was just grass and cardboard that was waxed, <laughs> and we'd hit trees and rocks and everything. I'm writing it down right now. I, I saw this uh, meme, uh, one of those inspirational pictures that shows like, you know, some words and then it has like a uh, picture behind it. And it's, uh, this one was of, it says, the, the quote says, uh, the original PlayStation. You guys might have seen this. It says the original PlayStation. And it was like, it's like a picture of a swing set. You know, so maybe we should have a topic um, uh, that talks about um, the, I don't know, what would you call it? Like the original PlayStation? <laughs> There's gotta be a better word for it. Like old ways of uh, having fun or things to do outside or yeah, maybe you guys can help me. Maybe it'd be kind of cool to have that topic. Oh my God, yeah. Uh, I went up to, to my nieces and nephews and taught them how to play all kinds of yard games like one, two, three, red light, hide and go seek. You know, those type of things. They they had no clue. They had no clue, but they had a ball once they learned. Did you teach them to beat any trespassers in the neighborhood? Sound like Jim was a violent ass, ass kid growing up over there. <laughs> and still is. <laughs> Not really, but I mean, we all fought and then we grew up together and then we like basically uh, kept any, kept the block, uh, you know, uh, safe and stuff. Like when we were in like high school or whatever, the ice cream man was coming around and he'd like, take the kids, you know, and that, then you had little kids on the street again, you know, we were, we were the little kids once and he'd like take their money that would be the change. And he'd be like, what else do you want? What else do you want? You know, um, and, uh, you know, they're little kids, so uh, we we uh, harassed the living shit out of that fucking guy. Oh, excuse me. But now, at the same time, you know, with the stuff that's going on, you know, how we, this is how we used to be, you know, but the kids today, and now we got obese numbers for kids because they sit on their ass and uh, play video games on computers this and that and uh, I think slowly killing the because of all this technology and stuff for them to have uh, if something don't change we could easily kill out the generations to come by oh crap I didn't mean to cut you off but yeah it's a combination of, of two things why their kids are getting so obese um, well, maybe three. There's there's a lot more junk food. Uh, parents are less responsible. 
and they're they're not going out and getting exercise and a lot of that has to do with the technology that's available to them that they use as a substitute for you know they're using their their minds and and their thumbs on their their little uh their little controllers rather than uh you know using their bodies and skateboarding and stuff like that uh huh. Then why are they playing the video games with their buddies online? It's because their friends don't even have to come over and play second player no more. They can be at their house playing, you know, because of the internet. You could be playing, hey, mom, bring me a soda, snack cake, this and that. They won't even get up to go get the stuff themselves. And they just tell their parents to bring it to them. I see some kids today in my own family um, who can communicate all day long by texting or Facebook or whatever, but when I try to have a conversation with them, they can't even look me in the eye. They kind of roll, they look down at the floor, and I, I think it's really causing a mental problem. I do. I, I, uh, I was saying this the other night, but I cannot stand how people want to text when a, you know, 60 second conversation will save you 12 minutes of freaking texting, you know, um, that, and you go out in public and you can't even like meet new people or start a conversation with a random person because everybody's just got earphones in and they're stuck to their smartphone. Yep. And I've noticed in public, at the mall and stuff, go to food court, sit down and eat. Instead of people, back in the day, food court was loud as hell. But now it's quiet. Like you said, they got people got headphones on listening to stuff or playing games or whatever. But instead of talking to one another, they right there in front of each other. I see these young people, instead of talking, using their mouth and whatnot, they are texting. And they are right there in front of one another. And their thumbs are going 90 to nothing. Yeah, going back to the whole game thing, you're right, man. Even the computer games nowadays being connected to the internet, the game consoles, you don't invite all your buddies over to your house to play games for a while. You don't, you don't get to even do that anymore. It's like we're evolving away from from this real like communication, this real like hanging out as like normal human beings, you know? And it's like the technology is doing that to us. And I feel like it's pulling us away from um, not only our connection to nature, but also our connection to people, like on that one-on-one -on -one level, you know? I mean, yeah, back in the day when we were kids, our buddies might be just down the street, made it a little bit more convenient. Yeah, given we've grown up, you know, we have more money for these these systems and we can, we can, you know, uh, once we, we're older, we're all moved and we're, you know, moved away or, you know, miles and miles apart, at least we can still play games together. But still, it's it's just taking us away from that connection that Abby was talking about. Like, we need that human connection and we're that, that personal one-on-one, face-to-face -on -one, -face human connection and we're losing it. And like, what happens when it slips away? What are the, you know, what happens then? I, I, it's just it doesn't seem like it's going in the right direction. And I don't think there's anything we can do to change it. But I don't know. I'm trying not to be uh, pessimistic, but damn, hard. Uh, well, you know what? Um, it's, I guess it's a choice, you know, and uh, the up and coming generation is making that choice to go backwards and uh, they'll lose it. And we know what it was. And because you can't do anything, you, you know, I mean, and even people in my generation that are my age that, that are like, pull that same, oh, I'm too busy to talk, but we can text for 45 minutes. Jesus, you know, it's ridiculous. Yeah, that's pretty crazy. Yeah. And that's how people are. Oh, no, I can't talk on the phone. But yeah, but yeah, they can text for that long. For like three times longer than than it would take to talk on the phone. The convenience side to uh, sending a text message. It's like, okay, assuming a lot of people people are more busy now than they used to be. There's more distractions. You know, we get a single 
given a single text message that someone says, hey, oh, by the way, can you, can you watch the house, uh, you know, when I'm gone or, or take care of my kid when I'm gone Saturday night or whatever, right? Okay, don't need an answer right away. It's Monday, right? So eventually, you know, the person gets back to you. But it's not like you don't want to go into a, like, you know you should be calling someone, and yet instead you start with the text message, you know, other than to say, hey, you busy? You know, uh, I, I need to talk or something like that. We need to talk or something like this. It's, it's crazy. You don't want to go into it. But then again, our generation might not. Maybe the younger generation just, just starts with a text message conversation and doesn't stop when they recognize that this is, could easily, like, like he was saying, like, uh, I forget who it was, it was saying that this could easily be, be taken care of in like, like 30 seconds of a regular conversation. You know? That was Jim. And another thing, you know, um, they just got done building a brand new, I'm talking about this joke is huge, brand spanking new library. And it's, it's probably a year old, and I've never seen nobody at it, hardly, whatsoever. People don't go to a library much anymore. Every single library I've ever seen here lately, there's nobody at them because they ain't got to go to the library to check out a book anymore. They can get online, their laptops, tablets, smartphone, and get them a book just like that, you know, and uh, instead of going to the library. I like it when people text me real important stuff because I ignore it for weeks. And, um, you know, verbal communication, it, it, there's so much to verbal communication and and versus written. I mean, you, you know, you can write a letter and communicate very well, but the way that we communicate w through this, these texting and these apps and these crap, it's been, it's already been shortened. Um, you know, they're, it's becoming more shortened, the language. It's so flat, you know, it's just open to problems. I mean, in communication, I see that happen. You know, people are like, oh, you know, they think that you said something to, you know, they take it wrong. Another thing, um, short of a, like a video call, you know, you don't see the, the, the facial expression, expression. And nowadays kids are shortening their, their text messages and they're using weird abbreviations that not everybody knows. And you could easily get lost, you know, if you weren't quite savvy with all the the abbreviations for shit you could get easily lost and be like oh i didn't know what you meant i'm sorry like i didn't i didn't get that <laughs> one in one ear one it went in one ear and out your my nose sorry oh andrew that's so funny i just have to say when i read a review on amazon and all those abbreviations are in it i skip right over it nothing irritates me more than that and people speaking in acronyms. I can't stand that. <laughs> then, um, as well, you know, like I mentioned, you know, we used to go to libraries to check out a book, check out this and that. Then um, parks, they still are used, but more of a family function, like I see these days, mainly people that live in the city. Uh, Every now and then they get together and have a little uh, playground um, get together on the weekends or something at least. But other than that, you don't see the playgrounds. You don't get to see the kids on the teeter totters, on the swing sets, on the uh, merry-go-round, stuff like that. It's all empty these days because they're at home on a video game. There's another thing that we could never, their kids could never do that we were, nobody's, nobody in the, so I grew up in like a, a street that had a, a cul-de-sac at the end of it that emptied into a park. And uh, around the 4th of July every year, every guy on the street for the two weeks leading up to it, you know, we're all making basically firecrackers or bomb type firecrackers, you know, and 
I mean, everybody did it. None of our parents cared. I live, I live on one of those cul-de-sacs right now that leads into the park, and it has a baseball diamond in it, and uh, an elementary school right next to the, the park that leads into it uh, through a gate, a chained gate. Uh, they bring the kids over there to run around, and all they do is put cones in the field, and the kids run from cone to cone for, to get their exercise. But the baseball diamond has never been used since I've been here. I've been here over 15 years. I've never seen kids play baseball, not once. And I'm retired, so I would see them. Oh, I'm sorry. No, that's okay. I was just saying it. I'm retired, so, you know, it's not like I'm not home. I would see it. That's crazy. I just can't believe that no family in that area even thought that, hey, maybe we'll, we'll go, you know, you know, hit some balls here, you know, or, I mean, given, yeah, that's a baseball diamond, you need a team usually to play, but you could just take your kid out, put put one of those those stands up to hit the ball, you know, and just pra practice and stuff, but you're right, even just that or just uh, kicking around a soccer ball or whatever, you think it would get used, but um, my concern is back to what Carl was saying about the health, like how how this modern form of communication is affecting our health like we're not especially in regards to like games and stuff um where where kids are quote unquote commuting communicating with each other uh through games and stuff like that and they're they're hanging out you know playing a video game you're sitting on your ass you're not running around like cheryl was saying that thing that she read where we used to run around and we didn't worry about what we ate because we could we were running around playing all day Right? There was no, you could eat whatever the heck you want. You'd burn it off by the end of the day. There weren't any fat kids. <laughs> well, maybe there were, but not nearly as many as there are today. So I'm, I'm concerned also about like the health implications of, of being so not needing to leave the house. And when we were running around, there was no way for us to carry a, a bowl of corn chips with us. These kids are playing video games and they're sitting there with their hand eating corn chips at the same time. So it's a double whammy. And it ain't only that, you know, some of these families, <laughs> uh, they modernize completely. Um, be sitting like right now, I guarantee you there's a family sitting at a dinner table and instead of talking about their day, they are using their phones to communicate and stuff. They they won't even discuss in person about how their day went and stuff. They just talk through and everything, you know? It's just uh, a modern family modernized into uh, social media. Won't even discuss how your day is by using your mouth and uh, family problems, you know. Yeah, I was thinking about that. Like, they may know what's going on with each other through social media, but the whole family isn't necessarily going to be connected. So someone in that loop is going to be left out and not knowing a thing about their siblings or their parents or vice versa. You just, you will know a lot less about what's going on with your kids a lot less about what's going on with your parents, what's, what are they working on, or whatever it might be, the family would just like not know each other. Imagine a family not knowing each other. I mean, it's one thing to go out with your friends, let's say go to a movie, and you don't necessarily talk much maybe, maybe if you didn't go to dinner, you don't learn that much new about your friends. You may not connect with all your friends when you go out, but come on, a family? I mean, that's like the most ritual ritually good thing to do is to break bread they, they call it i think breaking bread over dinner and literally meaning like have a talk how are things going over dinner it's like one of the most nourishing things we could possibly do. oops shit sorry not really um i've been trying to get it forever but um so please forgive me but i got a text that ted cruz dropped out and i wanted to add to the fact that, you know, 
you said that they, you know, they know all about these different social media and all about it. And that's true. And it's almost like, that's all they know. Like what kind of skill sets are kids, uh, are people not going to have that, that they could have otherwise, you know, I mean, most people can't even change their own oil. You know what, what the heck is going to be uh, the next generation? You know, they, they won't even know how to turn a screwdriver. I'm with you there. I haven't been able to get the button either. Um, and it's funny, you got Roman's picture up. <laughs> That's great, Jim. Uh, picture of Roman. Um, yeah, I don't even remember what I was going to say now at this point. Um, gosh, you know, when the and <laughs> um, going back to something uh, um, Carl was saying about the, the chips, you know, bullet chips, whatever. No, they, I don't think there's a bullet chips. Like these kids are so lazy. It's con more convenient just to grab the chips, the box of crackers, the cookies, the ice cream, whatever, stick a spoon in it, their hand. Um, and they're not doling out portions. So they're not eating like one or one and a half portions like they should. They're so distracted with whatever. And they haven't taken the time to eat a meal. So before they know it, they've eaten a half a bag or a whole bag of chips, a half a thing of ice cream, whatever. And there's this kind of mindlessness about their their eating habits just you know will make them so fat um but one good thing about texting is you know you might be busy like let's say you're you're working or you're in a meeting um and you get a text and you, you know you can't call them right then but you can easily slip back a message real quick because it might be important to reply soon so i mean like i said there there are pluses and minuses but yeah, I guess people should should get out more um, or at least connect in a better way more often, such as a phone call or Skype. You know, I know Skype is a modern thing, but um, yeah, it's it's the next best thing to being there in person. It really is. And, and we'll not just Skype, but video chatting. Well, you know, I think a lot of these kids that now, you know, they ain't going to have degrees, you know. A lot of them are going to be like working at McDonald's or something if they go as far as high school if they graduate. But I mean, <laughs> I don't know. That's what it seems like it's coming to. I've been trying to grab the mic forever as well. Uh, going way back to. Uh, hope you were talking about having a good uh, good choice of words for the topic you were trying to come up with and I thought about um, old time fun keeps rolling I thought it'd be a good one hey it's what the establishment wants they want the people to be so illiterate that they can only work in jobs like Walmart and McDonald's and stuff like that, unfortunately. It's really sad. They don't care about the literate, I don't think, the literacy or any of that, or education. Um, they just create a slave class. And I could go on and be deep about that, but I won't. Well, the thing these days, you know, even in the classroom, uh, unlike back in the day, whenever the kids were uh, acting and whatnot, they were trust. Uh, the teachers taught the kids. They weren't there as a friend or anything like that. They were there to actually teach them. These days, they are there for a paycheck. They don't really, there are some that is still there to teach. They don't care about that little crappy paycheck, but most of the majority, they don't care what the kids do. Kids end up dropping out of school and whatever. They don't care much anymore. Yeah, no, I didn't delete your channel. Yeah. <laughs> I just tried to come in here today, and all of a sudden, I'm not uh, trusted in. It's like weird. 
Yeah, that is weird. Uh, you know, it does happen on occasion where nobody did anything and it just happens that way. But anyway, welcome back. Glad you came in to join us. We're uh, in the middle of our Tuesday night discussion. Tonight's topic is on communication. Traditional versus modern tools of communication. The pluses and minuses of both and trying to get back to uh, more traditional forms of communication when when it's um, better than the uh, you know, more modern counterpart. Just as long as it's not political talk, I don't care. <laughs> I'm tired of hearing that stuff. Well, I think another thing is too, you know, they they have uh, online schooling for some of these kids now too. You know, you could just get your degree at home. I mean, I don't think they had that when I was around. <laughs> So you could actually get your high school diploma right home. Now that is one messed up situation there as well. Yes, it's more convenient, but one of the biggest, um, what shall I say, organizations or um, places to be where we get the most community with real people face to face is school. Think about it. Back in the days when we were in high school, college, whatever, we got more face time with more people than we we will have ever gotten after unless we really keep on that you know i mean they were there were school programs there were after school programs there were sports programs there was all kinds of things to stay connected and have more people and friends and stuff like this and and you know yeah not even being able to go to school anymore or needing to go to school i mean come on talk about even more disconnection you know uh huh, and because of that ordeal, that's why schools are <laughs> cutting budgets like crazy. You know, uh, no more uh, art class, no more drama. But if it's sports wise, they keep them around pretty decent. But uh, if it's something that ain't dramatic, that can get a kid a scholarship real easy. They pretty much do away with it, and yeah, kids drop out of. Um, it didn't. He didn't drop out of school, but he just quit going to school and went and got his GED online and everything. One of my buddy's kids, two of them did. They just quit going to school and did a online course and had their GED sent to them in the mail. So if you go to virtual school. You can graduate and go to virtual college and become a virtual doctor and have virtual patients. Wow. <laughs> Imagine that. When you never have to have a face-to-face -face conversation with anyone, ever. <laughs> uh, except for your parents or something. <laughs> I don't know. Sounds pretty scary to me. But um, yeah, there's a lot of cons uh, <laughs> with modern technology. It seems like so does that make masturbation virtual reality? And um, does anybody recognize that picture that I posted? I do, and I mentioned it. Unless you, oh, posted. I thought you were talking about the one on your profile. Um, yeah, I recognize the one on your profile. Uh, Roman. Okay, that's also Roman uh, that you posted. Um, no. Yeah, I don't know. It looks like him anyway. Looks looks like maybe Bernie Sanders as a kid. Yeah, that's got to be Bernie Sanders when he was a kid. When he was young, right? <laughs> no, so I got a friend request, and that was it from last night. And I'm thinking, it's Roman. I've only seen his picture posted once for like a second or something or other. I don't recall very well, but... Um, and I asked him and he said no. Okay, so are there any benefits to modern communication? I mean, yeah, given we've talked about all the, the bad the, the cons, but I mean, there are, there is a positive to, to this, right? I mean, otherwise, otherwise, why are we moving forward with technology and stuff like this if there's no benefit to us as a society? As, I don't know. 
yeah, it's got to be a benefit. Um, yeah, it's got pros to it, but I believe it's outweighed by cons big time. But uh, technology, uh, modernized, uh, you got YouTube videos to help you do stuff that you didn't need help with, you know, instead of like today, you get something, uh, it don't come with a manual much anymore, you know, you have to look up online or look at their website and print out a digital manual, you know, print it out to get it or watch a video to how to put something together. And you can learn stuff from, uh, then, uh, MD, uh, mdweb.com or whatever, you know, uh, find out stuff about your medicine and like, distrusting your doctor of what he is giving you you know you can go online and research stuff these days and all that's a a pro to me yeah but i don't know if that falls under the you know modern communication that's more research you know oh my bad I mean, not really, but um, I forgot what I was going to say. Um, yeah, to answer your question, Andrew, if I can even remember it because it was a few key ups ago, but no, it's not all bad. Um, like I said, everything's got its good points and bad points, pluses and minuses. Everything has its place. You know, it's just choosing the right communication tool. Um, and there's definitely way too much texting. People need to, like, get back to more phone calls. Get back to letting people hear their laughter, the smile in their voice, the inflection, the tone, the mood, all that. It's, so, it's such better communication than, you know, te texting a smiley face and an OMG and an LOL. Just those things don't convey it. Um, and it you know, if it saves you time or it makes it convenient, I get texting. But when you have a long conversation, it's not saving you time and you're not communicating better. Um, and, you know, these little e-greetings are great and emails, they're, 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 they're great when you want to send off something quickly, especially to mass people. It's free. But there's nothing more personal than a nice little handwritten note on some beautiful stationery or a greeting card. And people can keep that. It's a memento that they can keep forever. Um, my postal carrier that I talked to recently, she says this new generation, they, they have none of this, pretty much none of it. They might get a couple greeting cards from their grandparents or something because um, they're old school. But, you know, back and forth with their friends and peers, the people their age, you know, it's all these texting and, and some emails. And um, they they can't keep that. There's no memento at the end when they're old. She was saying that they have nothing in their hand, nothing to look back on and reflect. The same thing with pictures. These are all digital for the most part, too. You know, how many people send the little Christmas cards with a family picture on it anymore? Or even Christmas cards for that matter. <laughs> or whatever. It's all digital and there's, there's nothing, nothing for a scrapbook, pretty much. Oh, I got it. Okay, I'm not going to key up anymore because I have to pretty much cut people off to get it. Um, but I was going to say, uh, you know, take a look at the smartphone in your in your hand, you know, um, and all that information, you know, the gateway to all that information. Um, you know, we've never had – you can self-educate yourself with, this, with the device, you know what I mean, and – the information is uh, just unfathomable, you know. So I don't think it, as far as we know, ever in history we've had access to this much information instantaneously. What were you going to say, Jim? You got cut off or something. So going back to your, you know, question about, you know, the modern communication and everything being good, it is... Uh, really good to me because 
you know, you have people with disabilities and everything, you know, using all these different kind of machines to communicate where normally they could even say, I just wanted to drink a water or something. I mean, they can use this to communicate with Uh, sorry for interrupting you. Uh, talking about mementos that uh, uh, Ring on Fire Crown said before, I already posted a picture of myself back in 1983 or 84, 1984, because I'm 34 right now. And that's the mementos that uh, she was talking about. I already made some specific, uh, and specific video for my family with a specific pictures that we took past in the years. And we were, I don't know, this particular past week and this week, we were sharing through social media, we were sharing um, specific uh, pictures that we, that we have, that we remember uncles that are, are already gone, uncles that right now if you just look it up in a picture and you look it up in the other one, you think the difference because they are aged right now. We were, um, how can I say, remembering about Christmases that uh, one of my cousins was uh, Santa Claus and he was all dressed up and he was ho, 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 Merry, Merry Christmas. And we were like little kids and hey, Santa, we can't open the presents. Every single thing that uh, we were um, just feeling in that moment are good. Sorry, were good. And almost when I saw all the pictures that uh, my family, uh, my mom, my dad, uh, my cousins, my uncles were sharing, really I cried. I have them all and I really cried because I was remembering about my, my childhood my part of the youth was really amazing. Right now that you have smartphones, yeah, people can communicate. Disabled people can communicate. That's one thing that I said, hooray, for the particular mobile devices. I have two friends that are deaf, that cannot talk, but when they use and text me, is the way that we said everything, every, everything. And they have something called talkback that when they type, they say, hello, my name is, and stuff like that. So that's good. But the digital momentum that the millennials are having, they are not the same ones as when you have an old camera with a roll. You remember, you, re you maybe remember, uh, <laughs> sorry, you will be remembering, uh, I mean, uh, the Veta cassette or the VHS, oh my God, that was really hilarious when you have the big, big old cameras and then you said, hey, say hi to me, hi. And that was really, really good moments that the kids from now are not gonna be perceiving for nothing. Also, the, the chat that as kids we used to do just to have friends, is to uh, use the phone. We have a dialer, like that. Then somebody hang, uh, answers the call, hello. And then if that was a kid, you start talking to him. Or my uh, cousins said uh, that the first chats were trying to dial girls' numbers on the directory or the white pages. And then you call them and, hello, my name is blah. Oh, hi, blah, blah, blah. And then you start talking and you start dating and things like that. You go to specific days, go dance music. Oh my God, 70s, 80s, uh, the, 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 the first part of the 90s. was really awesome. I mean, I know that I'm having my own memories. I mean, I'm like crying a lot. Because those particular momentums that uh, Ring of Fire was saying, you are not going to to have it. I know that 
many of you can have kids right now, but they are going to feel what you felt. And that's really bad because, like I said, so as to finish, first of all, we use the devices. And uh, I have here in Mexico, we have a commercial that uh, there was a bench. And technology makes us really lazy that one side of the bench, the other side of the bench, there was a couple and they were texting. Just only say, hey, you know what? I love you. Instead of hugging and kissing. That's the sad thing about technology. But also technology can, um, I mean, can unite the world and also reunite families. Because Facebook, I can tell you, reunited my family. And technology makes me know many people around the world. I'm from Mexico City and I'm transmitting from Mexico. And many of you are in the United States. So that's a good part and a bad part. Mike is free. Well, you know what? I think, you know, like you say, it's really like a power out, you know, especially for like some of the younger people, they like, oh, they're like, oh, we don't know what correct change we're going to give you. Like our store, you're going to go to a store, you know, and somebody closes because they don't know how to do their math or about a, a register or a calculator or something. They can't do it by paper. What I got from that is, is that we don't have any more physical photos like to reflect back on. We don't have any physical letters that we got from people to reflect back. No mementos at all because it's all stuck in a digital land of our computer. And to, to find anything that we did back in those days and to reference anything we did, it would take, it would take days to go through some all the pictures that we've taken on our cell phones um, to, just to try to find out when it was that we did something and try to go back to that time and that moment and, and see some of the pictures. And, and like not having the actual physical copy to look at, to put somewhere, to actually print out and put up somewhere is something we will, that's the one thing we'll we won't have unless someone took the time to t put all the photos onto print them all out, put them into a, a, a what do you call it, like a, a collage of some sort. Um, and we just, it takes people to do that. It takes us realizing we need to get this printed on paper. Like I'm looking at a picture of my, my sister and her family. They did like a Christmas card and it has a picture of them all together on a, on a trail or something somewhere. And uh, really cool. But they did that. They made that. Without them taking that picture and print it, putting it to print, we wouldn't necessarily see that picture. And if they didn't share it on social media with everyone, uh, it would wouldn't, it would have gone lost in the shuffle. So it is a factor, a con, definitely a problem with modern technology. You know, I've received fewer and fewer Christmas cards as years go by. Uh, last few years, I've received maybe one. Yeah, last Christmas I got one. Um, you know, occasionally I might get one or two from, uh, like, like the dentist or or something like that. <laughs> Some mailing list I'm on. Um, but as far as from family, yeah, I got one last year. I might have gotten none the year before, and one or two previous year. You know, something like that. It's just very. Very little. It's not like it used to be like 15, 20 years ago. I, I'd get at least a half a dozen of them. Yeah, usually more. Oh, yeah. Uh, definitely Christmas time, I remember as a kid, and it still happens today. Uh, my mom, the back door of her, the main door, the living room door to the house on the inside. Is covered come Christmas time in Christmas cards from family members. And the picture I shared that is the old home place uh, and everything. My grandfather built that years and years ago. I lived there until I was 10 years old. Then we moved because the bank took it and all. But uh, 
that's a southern type thing. People back in the day used to fly, have a helicopter or an airplane fly over and take a picture of their property and stuff. Um, people don't do that anymore. There's one of the, just like that, a little different angle, but it's a uh, big that belongs to my grandmother and all. It's a real big picture that says the name of the family, my last name, family home, and all that mess at the bottom of it on a little plaque. Uh, I want to say something. First of all, I send two pictures that are waiting for being reviewed, and those are pictures about my family, my, my uh, grandma, and my mom and my uncles, and also me and my mm, whole family, they are waiting for review. So if you can post it, that should be good. Thank you. I was already uh, remembering things that on the past we did as kids. <clears throat> I was with my grandma and I sit on her lap and I start uh, listening to histories. Uh, stories, maybe right now you said, oh, they are stupid ones, but when you were a kid, oh my God, there were so amazing stories. Most of the things that I have uh, to tell you, it's that we were watching TV together. We were like uh, taking tea. I, I was taking milk. And also it was really a nice, 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 uh, well time. I have a lot of puppets that I play with, with my grandma. And you know what? When I when I think about those particular moments, I start crying. And this is something that shouldn't happen to me because uh, I was really remembering one of my uncles that that passed away in 2004. We played basketball together. Most of the times we were, uh, he was, uh, I mean, um, delivering me to to my job um to uh he said okay never mind just uh come with me we took some beers the places that that i went with my mom on vacations with friends these are memories that social media cell phones and computers cannot bring me back and not bring me back. I, I am the, I am of the persons that if I had a moment, I turn off my my mobile phone. I just only have a normal camera. One thing in the picture I put up makes me think about is that I never knew my great great grandmother or great grand great grandmother or great grandfather, and. You know, I would think that me still having their photo or sketch would be something that they would really like me to have and to see is like it sort of tell how they lived and everything. And it's really cool just to see, you know, the clothes they wore and just to sort of wonder how their life was and everything like that. I and mean, it's, it's, it's important to me and you know, it's going to be important to pass on to my son and the about his family history and such and you know the digital age can't really hold on to those as you know or give us such a good insight as something that you hold in your hand compared to just looking on a screen i think also when you're when you're the difference between digital communication and like one-on-one -on -one face to face communication is when when you're face to face you're sharing you're sharing the same place you're in the same place doing the same thing whether it be at a park, you know, celebrating somebody's birthday or, or I don't know, at a ballpark, watching a game or whatever. With digital communication, you're never in the same place. So you're never going to have the memory of the place and being and sharing that memory together of the place. Let's say it was Disneyland or whatever. You're just not going to have that without getting together. You know, um, digital communication takes that away from us. We won't have the memory. Um, you're just going to remember, you won't have the memory as much because you're going to be in the same place. If it be at your desk at home or at your place at work or whatever, you see that all the time. It's not like it's something special. The conversation might've been special, 
on you know modern communication through Facebook or whatever Skype, but you're not in a different place together. You're not experiencing something different together. So it's kind of kind of takes that away. You you just don't have as much of that as you would. Yeah, I was gonna say the same thing, but I guess you said it already. I don't know what more I could really add to that. That just sound like I'm repeating you, but. Yeah, you can't make those same memories. Like you could have just as good of a time um, talking, or even a, a group video chat or something, but it, it's not going to hold the same the same weight. And go, oh, yeah, we had such a good time when we were at the park or we at wherever. You know, like what do you say when you're? Oh, we had such a good time on the Skype, and it's just when you're not in a, a physical place, you don't remember it as well, um, and it doesn't have the whole. It doesn't hold the same meaning. We think in pictures, not in text. So true. Yep. <clears throat> Let me tell you something in a few words. More than that. It's killing real life. You know, if you understood this particular phrase, that it's my phrase, invented that phrase, modern life is killing real life. I have two pictures that need to prove. The first one is of my grandmother and my grandfather when he was alive. And the second one is just a picture of me. If you can't uh, approve another one that I send, that's my grandma. A very old picture of my grandma. So I wanted to show it to you so that you can know exactly how a Latino grandma looked. That's Get her done. We, I, can I can't even hear you at all. You just I sort of hear you're saying something, but it just sounds like a whisper. All right. Um, seems like we've kind of gone over all the pros and cons of, of the, both different um, different tools, so to speak, modern and traditional. So maybe we can go into, and I think you guys might have already said it um, roundabout. But what? Um, how does the future of communication look like? And what are the implications from our perspectives, like individually? What do we feel like is, like, I know Sexy Nerd has his opinion, but what do you all think about the future of um, communication in the world? I think mean, about singly, about personal communication why it's still the best meet face to face. But we are talking about digital communication where it's supposed to actually help flow information while I'm listening to whatever they've been speaking uh, from different countries so it's really different it's not about one to one but more like as many sharing as much information to reach out more people at the same time that's where it has improved a lot about the years and I think it's good that I'm hearing from someone who is like maybe on the other side of the country okay um, talking about uh, communication you have to watch or you should watch uh, the Jetsons, this particular cartoon. I think thing to um, are flying can be get you up there, sexy <laughs> or nerd. <laughs> I don't know who, how you want to be called, uh, but you were cut, you were coming in choppy. Anybody else noticing his voice um, cutting out? Yeah, bad signal there or something. While well, I got the mic real quick to answer Drew's question, uh, communication. Uh, I think it's something that ain't going to change. It's just going to keep getting more and more. You know, like 
you don't even have to go to your door to see who's at home, uh, who's at your door anymore. You know, they have systems where you can use your phone to see who, if you are in your bedroom or whatever, you know, you don't have to go to the door to see who's there. Or you can see who's at your house while you're not even at home, you know. So it's just going to keep modernizing and uh, whatnot pretty much. I think a, a really good example is the uh, movie Wally -E about, you know, how technology can, you know, it's good, but can take away from your physical interactions with people because until he comes to the picture, you know, they're always talking to uh, each other on their little video monitors or whatever and all that and doing all these things in a <coughs> excuse me and doing all these things in a virtual reality world and it's just not the way it, it should be like we've all said before but hopefully technology can maybe bring us back to where we're actually interacting more physically somehow. I was thinking in, in that regard, um, better video calls with more people um, from more places um, might help. Also, the holographic technology, if we could actually not touch the people, but at least like see them in physical form like real size like maybe you don't see the background but you see them you know um i don't know it's got to it's got to improve it's got to get better because if it doesn't it's like i feel like there's just going to be more and more uh disconnection lack that that feeling like we need something like we're missing something oh yeah it's that connection with people that one-on-one -on -one or uh, that connection with nature, that's a whole different story, but um, kind of on the similar lines of like kind of what we need as a, as a, as a culture, as a race, as a, as a people, you know. But uh, any other thoughts on the implications of this? Um, where is it going? And, and um, with modern tech, uh, communication tools and stuff, and maybe some solutions, like if there is such a thing as a solution in that regard, maybe a better way or a more balanced way of going about it you know individually maybe we can learn from each other at least we can't obviously change the world necessarily but um maybe who knows it only takes one person but yeah well going back to the holographic things you know and seeing people they that's already that's already available it's not to the public but I mean, they've already produced that where you, like you, I said before, you could see somebody, and, you know, physically there, you know, in a hologram, and, you know, the same thing with the background and all, like you were saying. And I watch way too many YouTube videos. They uh, also are making it where, you know, you'll have sort of a dummy in front of you or something like that, and it'll be able to interact with you how they're interacting. So they could give you a hug through that dummy. And, and all these different sensors and compressions and everything like that. And I, I, I don't really know. I, that's good, I guess, for some really lonely people. But as far as, you know, just, you know, actually being with a person and getting the, the warmth of a hug and everything like that and, you know, feeling the, the hair on your neck or whatever that you feel when you have a hug from somebody, I mean, you can't, you, you can try to duplicate it the best you can, but you can't replace it. No, and uh, that's you know Chinese culture. They got robots and everything already. You know, <laughs> pretty much they got one that uh, instead of you having to clean your house, it cleans your house for you. It's a cleaning robot, um, life size, not just a little vacuum. You know, the I robot vacuum thing we have over here, but over there they have a human-sized robot that helps clean their houses and stuff because they are such a busy lifestyle over there and they apparently don't have time to clean their own house.
I have to say that my wife, I got her one of those for Christmas because she she hates vacuuming, and we got one of those Roombas that I don't know if anyone can remember this from Flubber, but we have we call her We Bet because she's really thin and uh, just goes vacuum to the whole house and it's clean. Uh, we mainly got it for my son because I want to be I don't want anything to be him him. Eh. Him getting into anything that he shouldn't, you know, put in his body and all that kind of stuff. So I just want to make sure he's nice and safe. That's why we get really got that. You know, I also read somewhere, or not really read somewhere, it's just my intuition is more speaking to me. I swear I've heard it, but also it's speaking to me. And it's this feeling like, you know, when you get a letter from someone, like it feels like they actually give a shit about you more than the average Joe because you actually got a letter. Um, or if someone sends you, like you say, like the Christmas card, the people that actually send the Christmas card, you feel like they really care about you. Um, and so I feel like going back to traditional forms of communication is basically a way to, to, to show your love for people more um, because it stands out so much more than the traditional uh, way of communicating. It stands out so much that they're like, wow, this person must really care about me. So I don't know. I think... If we're going to get back to the basics, it should be about recognizing when is the right time to use this, the traditional form of communication um, uh, to show that you care, you know? Oh, yeah. And most definitely, um, my grandmother, my momo, as I call her, most people call her, got certain names for the grandparents she's my mama and my grandfather was my papa but um she still sends me a birthday card she does with everybody she's modern she don't <laughs> she even she still has a house phone she don't have a cell phone stuff like that but uh still has an old box tv not a flat screen she's my old school you know she is not modern at all, but um, it's nice to receive that birthday card every year, you know, knowing that she took the time to go to the store and per look at birthday cards and figure out which one fits him for that this year, this, this and that, and writes in it, you know, takes the time to write happy birthday to my grandson so-and-so you know uh then she puts a little money in there of course twenty dollars but uh that ain't that ain't no biggie there the money part and that i wish she wouldn't do it i try to give it back to her but just receiving the card is a whole lot better than uh like facebook people sending me uh happy birthday bro happy birthday man have a good one la 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 instead of you don't get the same feeling of receiving a birthday card. You know, somebody took their time to go to a store and purchase that, then write on it their actual feelings. All you get on Facebook is words, in my opinion. It's also less personal. Like, you're going to share a, a good story or, or something you were grateful for, um, for that person on Facebook where everybody can can see that that personal uh, thing uh, You know Versus putting it on a card and then arranging to meet up with them so you can give them the card or buy them dinner or buy her Whoever it is dinner. You know what I mean? Come on Yeah, that, that just shows that you give a shit, you know for sure I think there's a difference between uh, your loved ones and maybe your auto friends. Uh, digital is really good for if you're gonna speak at work, for example, if you need to work overseas, you still can keep in touch, you know. But of course, when you come back, you need to have that physical touch or physical 
connection. Uh, and I think in this, we can't really say that which is better, but every every form of communication really has its perks. Um, I still feel that digital communication allows me to really uh, hear and learn more from more more variety of people, as in from overseas. For example, Zello allows me to actually speak to different people, which is very hard. Uh, if you take emails, it's it's very fast. Information flow very fast. Uh, I mean, I'm not saying that uh, uh, old school communication is not good. I'm just saying that we just need to know which is for which and don't forget that uh, we, the reason there is digital communication is to really make things faster and more convenient. And that's the purpose of it. But old school is more to feel in the communication and feel the love. Yeah, like I'm looking at one of the pictures I found for this event. It's these two, it's a couple. Um, they're, they're wearing the same hoodie, you know, silver hoodie. And they've got the hoodies, hoodies up, whatever. They're giving each other a hug. They've got one arm around each other. And then in each of their hand is a cell phone that they're looking at. They're both looking at their cell phones, yet they're giving each other a hug. So it's like, you know, this whole idea, like I'm here with this person, you know, I'm trying to show love to this person, but at the same time, I'm wanting to be here somewhere else on the internet, on Facebook, on Twitter, following up with this other person who has nothing to do with my relationship with this person. And so you're not in the moment as, as much at all, um, with the people that are right in front of you. You're like, you're there, but you're not really there. You're, he you're hearing them, but it's not really registering, you know? So like I've caught myself doing that a couple of times with family, you know, um, I'll be checking something on my phone and they'll have said something and I'll be like, wait, what? You know, and it's like, come on, we gotta catch ourselves and be like, wait, you're here. You're here with this person, you know, having a real communication this cell phone all it is doing is taking you away from that you know it's like man uh we can i think feel like we can all learn a lesson um or maybe we'll never learn some of us may never learn i don't know now with that being mentioned it kind of um brings the thought um with a self you know um something that couldn't wait you know they give them each other a hug but they really want both to be online stuff like that. It's starting to be like uh, a disease, you know, uh, like cancer. We all know somebody that's done died of cancer, pretty much. But um, a text, a cell phone is taking loved ones from us now, or starting to take loved ones from us, going down the road. And just can't wait till you get stopped and uh pick up that phone and send a text and whatnot you got to pick up that phone and text while you're driving and end up hitting a semi or going off into a ditch and killing yourself because you couldn't wait a couple of minutes or so to reply to a text so we are starting modernized services taking our loved ones like a disease. Something that uh, I started doing with my buddies when we go out or whatever, you know, we'll all have our cell phones and it sucks like that. But uh, we've all sort of made a pat that, you know, all the cell phones go in the middle of the table stacked up on each other and um, you know we'll be out to eat or have a few drinks or whatever and the first person to reach and grab their phone has to pay for everybody's expenses that night so it really makes them you know just be in the moment and not worrying about stupid crap on your phone or texts or phone calls or gosh I need to check my game because my game is more important or something you know and I was, I was trying to do something like that at my home life as well, just because my wife and I get so used to, um, you know, not seeing each other for a few days at a time that, you know, we get back home and we're just like, we're used to being on our devices. 
and you know I, I just I've had to just take my phone and just cut it off for a day just to sort of realize that before oh yeah that's pretty neat there and uh, like some people you know use Instagram snapchat Facebook they get up in the mornings and take a picture of their breakfast on every single one to show their friends and family members, hey, look what I'm having for breakfast. Might as well, people like that, I think, my Lord, when are y'all going to end up taking pictures of you taking a crap in the toilet, take a picture of you taking a shower or getting ready to take a shower? They just modernize their, just put yourself into social media. <laughs> I can't stand that mess. I am, I'm one, I will share stuff whenever I'm out and about, take pictures and stuff like that and post them on Facebook, Instagram, stuff like that. But, um, not everyday ordeals. If I go to the lake, I take pictures of the fish I catch, stuff like that and post them to sh show people. Then I'm one, I will take some of my pictures to the store and hook my phone up to it and uh, print the pictures out and put them in frames and photo album and all that mess. People don't do that anymore. I don't know about you, but whenever uh, we get a good prize fish, we always go to, you know, where the local bait shop is and they always have a wall to put your picture up on, you know, about what you caught or what you, uh, killed and such like that and you know it's just spilled and you know we started putting you know uh sort of a book together of all those pictures and how to get a hold of people just so they can commu communicate sometimes you know with you know if you got a buddy you want to go hunting with and you can't go well you can call this guy you know you can trust him enough because you know he went to he went and killed him one put him up on the wall and you can just go have a good time that i think that's pretty good you know with, as far as that's a good physical and you know modern sort of day interaction that you can have with people about a you know at least you know out in the woods kind of deal oh yeah very true there um country uh country corner store that i go to is kind of like an old school it's out in the country, you know, modern, like the back in the day type thing, the old school general store where you get your gas, mail, and all that. But there are two old men up there in the mornings and out there today the playing chess and sh shit like that, you know, old school people. But yeah, there's a wall where fish, where people don't kill the uh, rattlesnake stuff like that deer alligator and all that mess and uh meet up with new people up there all the time and uh i met new fishing buddies and new hunting buddies all the time up there and then back home i have uh my uh trophies mounted on the wall and stuff a couple in my house then the rest are in the shop and stuff uh deer uh and other creatures that i've killed and it's a memory of i remember the day and where it was at and who i was with what friend and all that mess what hunting buddy or fishing buddy that i was with I think we could we could all take a little bit from this. Uh, if we were to take anything from this, I think it would be to to make an effort to call the people we care about more often. Not just call them more often, but take it upon ourselves to actually arrange to meet up with them 
uh, for anything, you know, it could be just for dinner, it could be for, for just to walk around the park or something. Maybe you guys have a place, that, you know, where you can go for a walk. It's, uh, you know, maybe a loop of some sort. You can go for a walk together or something. I think walking, to tell you the truth, I think walking with others is one of the best ways to catch up because number one, you can't easily, people do, but you can't easily use your cell phone while you're walking. Uh, you're not watching TV while you're walking or videos on your phone typically while you're walking. You really have a chance to not only get your exercise in, well, if you're just walking, at least it's something, but but you're also, I mean, you can go bike riding as well. That's even better. And, uh, and chit chat, you know, while you're walking and it's a good enough amount of time usually to really uh, catch up with people, you know? So I think that's, aside from the whole, I guess, ritual, you might call it a ritual of breaking bread at dinner, but also like, you know, setting up a, a time to meet up with a friend uh, or a group of friends for a walk or, you know, a ride or something, a bike ride or something like that, whatever's convenient for everyone. I think it matters, you know? So one thing I've gotten out of this conversation, I mean, I've got a lot, I got a whole page of notes in front of me, but, but that's one of the things that stands out. Oh yeah, and like you talking about, uh, and um, the other guy with the metal rocker picture there. I, I can't call your name there, man. Truck driver, um, fishing. Like man, him was discussing. We go fishing with our buddies. That's you know we catch up on friends, uh, the family. How are your family doing? This and that. Then. Uh, I spend time with my family and friends year round. Then a family was once a year, October, we do a family reunion. Families don't do that too much anymore these days. Get together once a year and see uh, new cousins and uh, do memories, you know, social, person to person memories and all, and talk about memories of ones that are not here no more and all, you know, uh, that's something that's missing big because we are always too busy or something. We say we are too busy, quite a few people, but we take the time once a year on a Saturday to gather up, have a cooking and all while the food's cooking. We sit around and talk with cousins, first cousin second cousin third one's way out there you know like fifth sixth cousins that we get to see we only get to see once a year but hey we make memories yeah i remember going out to the family reunions and just you know playing ball outside with cousins that i hardly ever see and everything and you know it's it was sort of a cool rivalry, uh, rivalry every year, you know, who could throw the most, more, eh, throw the most horseshoes or whatever, and you know, or score the most touchdowns, and you know, just playing outside, you know, and everything, you know, while mom and dad and all the others were inside, you know, filling up their family albums and such, and family history and everything like that. I always enjoyed those times. I haven't been in long long time more than probably close to 20 years then another thing i don't know there's one somewhere everywhere you know old old person you know just sitting there you know that uh little barbershop outside or something on the bench used to anyways but um Start up a conversation and whatnot. Don't talk, you know, get to know them a little bit, stuff like that, if you're able to. You know, I'm a person I can talk to anybody. Walk up to a damn stranger and start a conversation, get a new friend, pretty much. But uh, old people like that, that's been here for years, like my grandmother and stuff, they can tell you stories and sit there and listen about, like, one guy that uh lived down the road he done passed away he lived down the road about 20 miles from me uh he was an old timer 
he paved the road that I live on that used to be a dirt road whenever he was a kid and everything. And whenever he got grown, he was part of the paving crew that paved the road that I live on. And he got to tell stories of the Great Depression, stuff like that, growing up through it and, and all that mess, you know. Good stories. I, I like talking to old folks because you get incredible stories of real life moments. I'm curious, how do you, how exactly do you typically strike up a conversation with a random old folk like that? I mean, like, hey, how you doing? Uh, love to hear a little bit about your story. <laughs> like, what? Like, how does that go down usually? Is it kind of like happenstance or you're like just out of your curiosity, you uh, you approach them out of your sheer curiosity of them? Um, with me, normally, um, like at the barbershop that I go to, they always up there at the barbershop uh, and stuff. And I end up saying something and it reminds them of something way back in the day, you know, and uh, they end up telling a story of their life that they still remember, even though they are old, you know, some old folks still have an excellent memory. And uh, this guy down here, he done passed away, but uh, he had a nice garden and everything. And I told him I grew garden a little bit and I just stopped off and talked to him about his garden and ended up having a conversation about, you know, this, he, he like, you know, that road that you haul up, haul ass up and down out there. You used to not be able to do that. Whenever I was a kid, it was a dirt road and stuff like that. Uh, this gets into a story. way I usually strike up a conversation with anybody is talk about the weather, talk about the sports, talk about politics, and it just always seems to just go from there for me. Uh, I mean, uh, I'm just like him. I, I, I sort of just found out that, you know, talking to old folks is actually pretty fun. They might go on about some stuff I don't really care about sometimes, but I mean, it's, it's they have some a lot of good knowledge most of the time, and they, they'll be able to help you out with, like, the old ways of doing things, of fixing things, you know, doing it yourself, you know, just like changing your oil kind of deal. You know, there's cert certain things that you take for granted now that usually people do for you that, you know, back then you had to do yourself. I feel like striking up a conversation with an old, older person is similar to like striking up a conversation with a homeless person because in both cases you know that they might go on about stuff that you don't care much about um and there's there is obviously a risk of that and i think it, it i feel like it falls on us as being af afraid that that might happen that we we miss the opportunity to connect with those people i don't know it just it seems like it what it is for me and man you must live in a pretty cool place with cool down to earth people because I don't I don't remember the last time I was out in public where random people were really chit chatting with each other you know um, yeah it seems like in LA you know at least from my perspective it seems like a lot of people tend to just stick to themselves and you know what they're doing and they don't they they almost like almost like they're afraid that they would interrupt someone or feel like they were um, eavesdropping if they commented on something that someone else was saying next to them. Um, I feel like we're so maybe too respectful um, where, we are, where we're afraid to even comment on some stuff that we're hearing. You know, I think a barbershop would be a perfect example. You overhear stuff people saying over here, talking, you know, about something and uh, barbershop around here maybe won't go the same way as a barbershop over there. Um, uh, I don't know. That's just from my perspective on stuff. Uh, just different kind of people. Maybe. Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Uh, next time you in a say grocery store, there, Drew, and uh, or curve store, you know, you just came in from outside, and you 
waiting in line at the register and be like, damn, it's uh, hotter than a kick's ass today, <laughs> you know, and the person in front of you, yes, yeah, sure is a sculpture today. Be glad when that rain gets here tomorrow. Yeah, I need some rain on my uh, garden and everything instead of having to water it and whatnot, make my light bill. It's a conversation, bam, like that. And mention a garden and that person, like, oh, you got a garden? I wish I could grow one and you end up having a brand new friend. Um, you guys are talking about something that I do all the time. It's written right in my profile that I like to uh, talk to elderly people, and you learn a lot from them. And what I do is uh, I go to malls and, and places where old people sit, and I walk up and I sit beside them. And it might be, it might be just one person or it might be a couple or whatever, and you hear some great stories. They love to talk. <clears throat> they love to talk about themselves and their life to anybody who will listen. And... Uh, you know, they got the experience. It's it's really cool. And uh, you just, as a while back, uh, you, just, you just say cohort. You don't got to say the whole name is out there. It's a little easier that way. All right. All, good thing because all I see is cohort. <laughs> I don't see, on the PC. I see that name. Anyway, so um, maybe we should kind of round it out here. Um, uh, any final thoughts about about this topic? By the way, guys, anyone who's, who showed up late, we've been talking about traditional versus modern tools of communication, and we're just kind of having some final thoughts real quick, um, or not so quick, whatever comes to mind um, about this. And if nothing comes to mind, I feel like we've done a pretty good <laughs> Uh, job covering this. The last question I had here was solutions, like, you know, um, you know, traditional versus versus modern. Like, what are the solutions here? I mean, yeah, it sounded like for the most part, this program was about how modern tools of communication are pulling us away from each other. Um, kind of what it felt like was talked mostly about to me was like it was. Modern forms of communication are pulling us away from each other, and we're, we're not getting that one-on-one -on -one connection that we used to when we were kids. Well, for those of us who remember when we actually went out and played and, and came up with games and stuff to do outside. But uh, what, are, what are the solutions? Like, is there such a solution? One of the things that I tentatively try to do or, or nudge is to, let, let's see if we can find out some solutions on, uh, on whatever we're talking about here. So at least we can walk away with something we can we can do. So any thoughts, any final thoughts and or solutions uh, in regards to this topic? I think it's about parents spending quality time with their children, you know, and, 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 and teaching them them games and teaching them uh, 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 making those feelings come in their kids that they need it. You know, they need that social uh, network. I completely agree with David on that, but also I, I sort of said it before, you know, whenever I get together with my buddies, all the phones go in the middle, and whoever picks up the phone first has to pay for everybody's meals and all that. So I think trying to implement something like that into, you know, your family life as well, you know, rather it be, you know, you have to do all their chores for the week or something like that or whatever it might be, you know, you can make up any kind of rules you want to because... I know I've been really trying to enforce it with my wife and I just to, you know, we don't have any notifications about any kind of apps that we have. It's, you know, we just put our phones to the side and we can't really view them or look at them and just get to them if, only if it's a phone call or something like that, basically. You know, and just try to just have more one-on-one -on -one time, especially with my son, because he's just a ball, just a little over one year old, so. One hundred percent with uh, David on that ordeal there, and um, I'm old school as well when it comes to a parenting. I ain't a parent not yet, and all, but uh, 
teaching them this and that, then uh, as well, discipline, you know, proper discipline. Not none of this going to take your game station away and your smartphone away from you and put you in your room all day for you to stare at the walls. That ain't going to teach them a damn thing. Yeah, I I agree with David and and uh, and all of you guys. Um, I think it's really what we allow. In many ways, is what we allow to happen is what's going to continue. I have this I have this quote in my room. It says just that what we allow is what will continue. And I think if we allow these things to happen in our own lives, obviously we can't control the rest of the world, but. In our own situations, if we allow, allow it to happen, like for instance, when we're out with friends, if we allow everybody to be distracted by their phones and we don't at least mention this kind of game of putting the, the phones in a basket and, and having something where, you know, like, like he said, um, cohort said, like basically, you know, somebody pays for everyone if they have to go to their phone for some emergency or whatever it might be for whatever reason. Pay, pays for everyone's drinks and uh yeah it's it's that the parents what they allow the kids to do you know like it just comes down to saying wait stop hold on you know this we can't let this continue to happen at least i have a choice as a parent like i'm not going to let this happen anymore this is uh, i see that there's a problem here and i see what it's going to do to my kid potentially um and i have a choice to 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 uh, amend the situation a little bit and uh, and raise my kids a little bit more um, grounded or I don't know better head on their shoulders or something you know um, so that's good all good man you guys have been awesome I I uh, really got a lot out of this literally I hope you guys have been taking notes as well but I literally have a whole page of notes with some some items uh, starred <laughs> you know highlighted so to speak uh, from from this so I'm very grateful. Uh, that we all came together, that, that this program exists, and that there are people that care enough to participate and share, you know, their insights on stuff. Pretty awesome. Might I say one thing? Um, wh one of the things that is missing, I think, is, uh, I know somebody said breaking bread and whatnot, but cooking with your kids is a great tool, you know, it's a real good tool to take your kids into the kitchen and let them create something. They feel good about themselves and they learn something really good. And the shared camaraderie around cooking uh, real, really is a good tool. Another one is karaoke. Parents who sing karaoke with their kids and board games are, are, are another great thing to do with your kids. Uh, you, can't, you can't replace those moments. And at the same time, like my dear friend over there, Andrew, if he don't hurry up and uh, shut that thing, I'm going to get a flight and go out to the city of Angels and go knocking on his door. Be like, had to fly all the way out here to accept my own damn contact request. Damn. <laughs> oh, uh, I said it a while back, but... Uh, you were talking about trying to come up with another topic earlier and kind of tagline to it. Um, I think it said, old school fun uh, keeps on rolling. Did you get that written down? Uh, another one. There uh, for that um, old country song, you know, um, are the good times really gone, or are the good times really over? Yeah, are the good times really over? Uh, I don't know if you're going to or not as well, but. Maybe after you go through all your notes, you can sort of put together something that makes a little more sense and order and everything that went down tonight. Uh, put it on your uh, website or something so we can sort of all view it, more take notes from it because I've been driving, so I've been trying to make 
as many mental notes as I can, but my memory is not the best at all. Usually, I, I when I uh, I always have a pad of little pad of paper with me so I can remember to do things or uh, have stuff that I need to get done later on. So a little uh, uh, having it down somewhere I can see it again will be nice. Cohort, I hope that's good enough. Uh, just sent a picture of my page of notes. This is what it looks like. <laughs> uh, that's crazy. Um, sometimes there's multiple pages, but uh, it's pretty good. It's a pretty good night if I can fill up a whole page of with notes. And some of it's just me, um, you know, stuff that I want to talk about. Some of it's stuff that you know someone else mentions or whatever, and I asterisk that stuff usually. Just random stuff, but yeah, that's good. Otherwise, um, you all can follow up uh, in the Our Healing Choices profile. You'll see a link there on uh, some of the past programs we've put up on on YouTube. Um, I uh, I've been recording the programs for the last like for a long time, but at least um, real like th that I put up so that others could benefit from. Just been on YouTube from Cheryl's suggestion. That was a good thing. So there's probably about 12, 10 or 12 episodes up right now. Uh, you can get to it from that. And I'll try to get this one up um, within the next day or two. I'm working with my brother tomorrow almost a day, so it might not get done until um, uh, Thursday. But, um, but yeah, um, if there's any other final thoughts, go ahead and shoot. And then um, go ahead and close this one out. And, Get going with uh, picking a topic for next week. Um, hopefully you guys have it in you enough to uh, uh, hang out for that. It shouldn't take too long. I try not, try to get through it as quick as we can, you know. But uh, any any final thoughts? Any other final thoughts before I close this one out? Um, where was that that you said you uh, – what, what's it called that you posted on YouTube as? Yeah, you could just uh, go to YouTube and type in Our Healing Choices and you'll see uh, the current playlist. Uh, just look for the one that says a playlist and uh, you can see um, the previous like 10 or 12, I think, uh, topics. I think from week 98 up until, I think I'm, I haven't gotten one up because of it, it was too long and I couldn't trim it on YouTube. Um, there's probably one missing out from 98 to to uh, 110, so about 12 episodes, 11 or 12. And like I said, the link is in the, the Our Healing Choices profile, um, read the website uh, link, should link. Wasn't able to link it before, but I had to put it in the, in the website spot on the profile. So yeah, you'll, you get to the playlist from there. Again, that's the, that's the link to the playlist. So the playlist will always evolve and have other, you know, programs added to it, but that link will always be the same, which is cool. And, uh, Drew, since first time talking, or I've been talking to you all night, but, uh, or most of the night, um, done found out about YouTube and all. Very cool, dude. How you getting uh, stuff out on YouTube? Um, I ain't listened to none of them yet, but, uh, there's like 10 or 12 of them up on, over there. I want to say like 12 and all, but very cool ordeal. Yeah, thanks, brother. I, I really am grateful for, for Shell for for recommending that uh, we do that because um, 
I was kind of dragging my feet getting the getting the um, what would be like an actual podcast together. And I really still want to do that, but like it's just so much. It was so much of the idea of it being so much of a production, and I've already got kind of a production of some sort going on here um, with the follow up and the in the the you know preparing the program each time and the follow up after that, you know trimming the video, getting it up on YouTube and stuff like that. That uh, you know having an actual uh, podcast about it was like kind of overwhelming. And so I didn't get to it. And so Cheryl's like, well, let's just get get it to the people, so to speak, you know, and, you know, sooner than later. And I and I agree. And I'm like, all right. And she said, let's just get it up on YouTube, have it done. She had seen something else that I did, or she had heard from somebody else how they did it. And I was like, oh, I didn't know you could do that. I'll just try it. And it worked out. And so so we've been uh, we've been doing live on air uh, on YouTube, uh, Google Hangouts. Um, I, I usually post the link on the Facebook page to the Google Hangout about within the hour, at least within the hour of the program, I'll post the link to the Google Hangout. So if you wanted to just listen to it through Google, you could just listen to, people could listen to us chatting about a topic, which is something you don't get a chance to listen in on any other way. Um, I think it's pretty cool. I haven't been a part of that Google Hangout chat and listening in to like y'all talking because I'm always here of course that's not going to happen but after the fact obviously you can go back and listen to it as if it was you listening in on a on a discussion about some you know wellness topic obviously you don't get to to interact but you get to at least l listen to people uh you know wise people wise, wise folk like you all here you know chat about something important you know that we could all learn from so it's great I think it's it's really great um very uh, thankful for that. Yes, it is great. And just let you know, I'm here. I'm listening uh, probably a little more than I'm not, <laughs> but not by much. I'm just really busy. I'm going to step out and take you guys with me. I should take my tablet at home and relax and <laughs> charge that. But um, yeah, I'll join in when I can. And yeah, Andrew, I'm really glad that you did that and found an alternative that doesn't take so much work. And you know, I'm going to keep pushing you to try to get some of the past ones up. One a week, come on, one a week. <laughs> LOL. <laughs> L-M-A-O. <laughs> for, for, for anyone who actually gets that, uh, please don't, please don't bitch slap me through the, through the, the phone. <laughs> Uh huh. Reach over there, and, and once you close everything down there, Drew, don't take off to the hills, man. Hit me up in my solo. Right on, right on. Uh, <laughs> the irony was, is that uh, I, as I was connected to my computer, I I just don't see where I can accept con uh, contact requests on my computer. I've just never really noticed it but when i switched over to my phone obviously i remember like how to do that on the phone so i was able to to add you um all right cool i can stop sending to that old account <laughs> it's too bad the old account doesn't just drop away um all right um all right i'm gonna leave another you know 30 seconds or so for a final thought and then i'm gonna go ahead and close it out or so uh, i think we're good here <laughs> it's been an awesome night of uh introspection and discussion here and the ring of fire. What's going on everybody? How's everyone's evening? Well, with that, I'm back at the D.C., going to get unhooked and head to the yard and then head to the house. So we'll be home in about an hour central time. So I'll be home just a little before midnight, but I'm at home a day early. That's all that matters. So y'all have a good night. It was a very good discussion. I'm going to take a lot from it. Thank you for sending the picture. I got it saved on my phone, and I'm going to print it out when I get to the house tomorrow. So. 
Thank you all again. Y'all have a good night. Later there, fellow truck driver. Have a safe one there, man. And I'll uh, catch you on that flip side. All right, cohort. You take care, brother. I appreciate you uh, jumping into the conversation tonight. Um, good choice. <laughs> and if you want to be uh, informed of the the topics uh, each week, go ahead and add me as a contact, um, and uh, I'll uh, get you on that list. I, use, I always send it like within an hour of the program. Anyone, by the way, who's listening, if you want to um, jump, be able to get a, a a call alert with the the topic of each week um, an hour before the program, just go ahead and add me. And I'll do my best uh, to get you all that notice. It takes a while, and I'm learning to try to come up with a way to, to, to make that happen without sending it to 100-plus people. For now, that's the way it works. And I will get it to you. Thanks. What's happening, Ring of Fire? This is Waze from SA. How are you guys doing out there? Well, what's going on, Wade? And I'm not sure for everyone else, it sounds like a lot of people are taking off as I was joining. <laughs> all right, I'm going to go ahead and close this one out. Um, just want to thank you all uh, for being here tonight, um, making the choice to be here tonight and listening on the program or uh, participate and share what you, what you know about it. And yeah, I love that. You guys are awesome. So, um, yeah, stay tuned. Um, we'll be doing this every week. So if you want more of the same, um, different topic each week, um, uh, same kind of discussion, uh, you're always welcome here for sure. So yeah, I love you guys. Uh, keep coming back. Uh, your good presence here. Those of you who, who spoke up, uh, it's good to have you. Your word is, is, is uh, is gold. And 